The supreme, profound, and sublime Dharma is difficult to meet, even in a billion eons. But now I have been fortunate enough to have seen it, heard it, received it, and kept it. I vow to attain the true meaning of the Tathagata. The Ninda la Mufluver, Jabsu Geron of Kumchuksum Kona, Yem de Tijan, de Konan, de Kona la Timber of Shazan, de Sum, Jalava, Jan, Tower of Mashago, Yamda, Nibre of Shene, Jamjo, Gumu, Jabab Sarano, Kund of Shapar Tarta, Rangla, Wang Machang, Stagder Dungerjan. Zhenwanjan she bat Chudmazala, Jir, Goni, Lapper of Samla, Tisher, Dumur Mandodna, Tis Jemerga, Pong, Gu, Yamdo, Nars of Tov, Zi, Sherzan, Shima, Dambala, Bato. So let's continue with the teachings on transforming suffering and happiness into enlightenment. Previously, we've already talked about there's uh, uh, we have to accept the suffering. Can you hear me properly? Good. Uh, Previously, we've already talked about we shouldn't reject suffering. Also, when suffering is already there, not only we shouldn't reject it, we should accept it with a joyful mind. This is not easy to do. Why is that? Because as a mundane being, whenever, in fact, we encounter any suffering, we won't be happy about it. Theoretically, I think you can accept suffering, but when you face such a situation, it may be more difficult than you think. On top of that, having such having difficulties and sufferings, not only to accept it and ask you to cultivate the attitude of being joyful, it would be really difficult to do. So how can we do that? The most crucial point is to practice it, is to familiarize yourself with that again and again. Especially when we practice this method or practice on uh, bodhicitta or practice on the mind of compassion, we have to practice on it, we have to familiarize ourselves on those teachings. 
We don't necessarily have to intend to retreat or do it in samadhi. However, uh, we have to practice in the way to contemplate, to repeatedly think about it, to repeatedly generate such kind of thinking. In such a way, those are all considered as practice. And slowly, slowly, in such a way, you will be able to have certain uh, realization or inner experiences with some uh, apparent or not so apparent ways that, that would take roots in your mind and will eventually grow deeper and deeper. Because many inner realizations are attained uh, through their diligence, it doesn't come through imagination. It is not easy to attain those realizations. The previous great masters attained supreme realizations. They've given so much to attain those. Can you hear me well? Yes. In fact, uh, this teaching is not that easy. It's not that simple. But it is not that difficult either. Because as long as you have faith, as long as you have confidence, and uh, you've put in an effort, you will definitely be able to develop such kind of mind. Because in our Buddha nature, we have this capacity and we have this seed. Therefore, in the process of your contemplation and practice, you should diligently practice. You should practice wholeheartedly, repeatedly, and with lots of determination. So try your best to efficiently let your mind gain such uh, using it as my earring, uh, the, the headphone. Uh, um, this is quite important so, so that eventually you'll be able to uh, gain this kind of inner realization in your own mind so that it will be helpful to you. Previously, we've already talked about when suffering actually happens to you, you should not reject it or keep thinking that, why me? I'm so unfortunate. Oh, poor me. Oh, poor me, poor me. If you continuously to think in such a way, if you repeatedly to think in such a way, and thinking in such a way that you cannot eat anymore, cannot sleep anymore, cannot rest anymore, um, in that way, then I think maybe the actual thing is not uh, the last straw that crushes you. Rather, it is your emotion that crushes you first, because your mind is weaker. 
我们生存在这个时间当中的话呢，呃，即便是非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常
that oh I'm sick today I'm so happy about it someone slandering me criticizing me I'm so happy about it I got opportunity to practice now of course this kind of um, uh, realization is not attainable by everyone but we should trust ourselves that that whatever happens uh, there will be a solution and uh, if we can have this kind of mentality then whatever happens we will be able to face it just as it is stated in Bodhisattva Charyavatara if we have faith and then work on it if we have confidence and then work on it and practice uh, along the same way then even if you encounter the biggest problem and obstacles it won't create any suffering I think this is for practitioners with a really big heart for us we have such a fragile and such a sensitive and such narrow mind uh, and in such a way whatever tiny is the problem that we encounter could be because uh, could be a big problem eventually bringing suffering to oneself as well as others so we have to put the theory that we studied into our actual life and that is practice and you definitely need to accumulate practice into your life as well without accumulation uh, unless you are a true Buddha or Bodhisattva uh, whom probably don't need to uh, have this kind of accumulation all they need is a tiny bit of uh, uh, contributing favorable condition then their mind of compassion and uh, wondrous uh, manifestation would appear but for majority of us without accumulation we cannot attain that therefore we really have to work on ourselves so that we can uh, have the fruition of practice so let's continue with today's class cultivating the attitude of being joyful when suffering arise maybe sickness it could be wealth it could be maybe a divorce it could be a layoff any kind of this uh, unfortunate events you can view them as the best favorable conditions the best companions on the path of practice and then uh, generate joyfulness just as it is stated in Bodhisattva Charyavatara the wise ones going through different kinds of suffering will, will not disturb the clear mind not only that their mind will not be disturbed their mind would be ever clear their mind will become ever more bright and clear but for the not so wise ones for the fools just as me Parmbache stated that whenever whenever and whatever suffering they encounter not only they will not receive any benefits or value they will in, in fact spend days without uh, pay attention or trying to learn from their uh, their experiences but for the wise ones they're not like that at all when they encounter happy moments they won't get arrogant they will turn happiness onto a path of enlightenment and uh, when they encounter suffering they will learn more from that and uh, they will make such suffering into uh, their companions and therefore give rise to uh, joyfulness so seeing suffering as an I like uh, to help us on the path we must learn to develop a sense of joy when it arises and yet whenever suffering strikes unless we have some kinds of spiritual practice to bring to it one which matches to the capacity of our mind no matter how many times we might say to ourselves well as long as I've got roughly the right method I'll be able to use suffering and obtain such and such as a benefit is highly unlikely that it will succeed will be as far far from our goal as saying goes as the earth is from the sky 
It means that, uh, as a wise one, then they can transform suffering on t into enlightenment and uh, transform whatever uh, on the path into uh, favorable conditions. But for us, we're not like that at all. We cannot transform these. When we're happy, we cannot practice. When we're anxious, we can't practice. When can we practice? There's really no time to practice anymore. We would say that it's raining outside. It's bad weather. I don't feel well. It's too hot. Uh, my mouth is dry. I'm so thirsty. I'm not feeling comfortable. It's too sunny. It's uh, too rainy. Other than the weather, it's uh, uh, it's the health. So. Really, there is no way for you to practice anymore. If you are happy, you cannot practice. If you cannot practice when it's suffering, there's really no opportunity for you to practice ever. Therefore, what you should familiarize yourself is. It is wonderful to practice when I'm happy. It is wonderful to practice when I'm upset. People would, there are people who are、uh, giving different excuses, such as、um, I'm in bad mood, I can't practice, and then they say like I'm not in a good health condition. I will practice after when I'm healthy. So, day after day, how long would you live? Good,、uh, good practitioners don't do that. Good practitioners don't pro、uh, procrastinate, even if they're going through suffering, even if they're not feeling well. They would use the time to practice. So over here, it says that we should turn our,、uh, we should then、uh, turn the suffering into the path of enlightenment, and we should very much find a. Practice that goes with our mind. Otherwise, transform suffering into the past is really just very vague. It's a concept. Just like when we say that I'm going to liberate all sentient beings, your eyes are wide open and speaking very clearly. But whenever someone with a bad temper stand in front of you, you cannot handle them. That is to say.、Uh, Then, in such a way, how can you liberate all sentient beings? All sentient beings is very vague concept to you as well. Similarly, you really have to have one practice that you can actually use when you're suffering. It's just like when you're ill, there、um, you have a medicine. You have to use a medicine right away. If you only know the different terms of medicine, I have to eat medicine. I have to use the good medicine, Tibetan medicine, Chinese medicine, African medicine, Egyptian medicine. Whatever you say is not going to help your illness. Similarly, to transform happiness and suffering, if you do not actually transform, if you do not actually practice such transformation, then it doesn't matter. No matter how long you stayed in the in certain monastery or or certain university or centers, it doesn't make any difference. I read lots of uh, uh, introductions from different people. So and so practiced in retreat for twenty, thirty years, and right away I would think, has he actually practiced all of those teachings? Has he studied in so and so college and so and so Buddhist、uh, academies? Well, without actually practice on it, then、uh, even if you. Spend your whole life, even if you write all the number of years on your resume, it doesn't make a difference. If you only come to this place as a place to take refuge from a great rain,、um, it doesn't make any difference to your mind stream. It's easy to say、uh, we can use the skillful means and transform suffering into practice.、Um, wouldn't it be wonderful、uh, to have suffering? It has so much merit and so much benefit. It doesn't matter how much you talk about it. You can talk, you can talk as much as you want, but if you do not. 
put it or do not put it into your action. You do not infuse it with your mind. Then your actual practice or actual life is like sky and earth to. The uh, the um, the actual meaning of this、uh, teaching, it doesn't really make any difference in your life. Therefore, we should practice again and again. We cannot only. Uh, we have to practice again and again. It really depends if you can constantly remember this teaching again and again. If you can, then it is very meaningful. Without it, then it's very difficult to、uh, reach the goal. The goal is to、uh, the goal is to merge your, yourself with the Dharma, merge your mind with the Dharma. Whenever suffering happens, you actually genuinely happy to accept. It. Many people can't do it, and the reason is that you're not practicing it. Therefore, whatever practice that we study,、uh, whatever we、uh, adapt into our daily practice, then it has to be something that is very suitable to you. For some people,、uh, I think practicing renunciation helps. Whenever suffering occurs, they would practice renunciation. For some, it is、uh, to practice taking refuge. For some, to practice prostration, and because it would destroy their arrogance. For some, it would be repent or confession,、um, and for some, it would be practicing. Uh, uh, Tonglen,、uh, and for some is to read the teacher's teachings, and they will gain more confidence. I myself, every time when I encounter suffering, I really feel that the teaching of、um, impermanence really helps. Whenever suffering happens, whenever suffering occurs, the first thought comes to me is that、uh, it is the impermanence that Buddha had taught. Everything is impermanent.、Uh, my health declined when、uh, when my health declined very、uh, suffering quite a bit from、uh, from that. Or when things doesn't happen the way I wish to, then I would say, well, it is indeed. What the Buddha said that everything is impermanent. So in such a way, I I、uh, I, 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 I personally adapt to such practice. In my life, I really think that to transform suffering onto into the path is really the best the best method. And maybe because I feel more strongly about impermanence, and、uh, therefore I adapt to this particular practice. When I was young, I. Didn't really practice. I, I didn't really receive a systematic Buddhist education. I only had faith. I didn't have systematic and theoretical teaching.、Um, but my understanding of impermanence is rather very strong. I see the corpse of yaks, and I would think, "Wow, this is so impermanent."、Um, All of these yaks used to live, and I used to like those yaks quite a bit. And when I go to the charnel ground, I have、uh, the strong, strong feeling of impermanence. When I、uh, then uh, look at the different relationships, the changes of relationships, I think in such a way as well.、Um, the, When I hear how people are revered, and when I hear how people、uh, are really wealthy, I would also contemplate up on impermanence. I think this is because of my habitual、uh, tendencies or my karmic、uh, karmic uh, um, tendencies, and therefore I practice on impermanence. So whenever suffering occurs. Though I have this understanding of impermanence, I don't give up everything because of impermanence. Rather, I treat whatever I have to do with great care and with lots of、um, uh, effort.
I think many people really want to take a picture of me with my with my uh, with my earrings. Unfortunately, you can't really take a photo right now. I'm sure you really want to, though. So this part is really important. I'm sure everyone really want to uh, learn how to transform suffering into uh, practice. But you have to familiarize yourself into it. Without practicing on familiarization, it's not possible to use it when you need it. When suffering occurs, you would probably lose all your control and you're probably going to be dragged by the suffering. Don't even mention about turning suffering into the path of enlightenment uh, or uh, have uh, the attitude of being joyful. It is really a far fetch. So you have to practice it. Practice impermanence, practice uh, renunciation, practice bodhicitta, so that you can use it whenever you need to. Just as lots of soldiers, they would go through many years of training. And then, after many years of training, whenever they meet the enemy, the first reaction they have is to take up their weapon. That becomes their uh, first reaction, their natural reaction. Similarly, whenever we practice on a daily basis, and very often we practice upon impermanence, bodhicitta, and uh, uh, renunciation, and so on, if you practice in depth, and then the first thing that occurs to you when suffering occurs is that, oh, everything is impermanence, so there is nothing to grasp onto. At my hometown, there was a house that was that got on that uh, that was on fire. Three kids were locked inside the house, and then uh, the three kids died. The parents were very upset. They were suffering quite a bit. Some of their relatives were um, were monks from Larongar, and um, they went back uh, to chant sutras for them. To to chant uh, to chant for them. And I heard from those people that they, the, the relatives who were monks who were ordained are very different. They seem that they're uh, sad and uh, having tears, but they were chanting at all times. It is really because They've went through the Buddhism education. They understand that life is impermanent. If it were other relatives, other people who are not uh, practitioners, they really couldn't face such event. Uh, the mother of the kids uh, fainted from crying. So for people who, so to these relatives, close relatives, the um, the monastics then give them teachings about the previous karma the, and impermanence and so on. Therefore, for people who encounter suffering right away without any pra uh, previous practice, uh, it is not going to work right away uh, if you take out the theory because 
You've never practiced it, so if you practice, if you listen to it many times, familiarize yourself with this kind of teaching for many times, and then whenever suffering occurs into uh, occurs in your in your life, uh, you will have stronger power to uh, face those adversities. This is quite important. Without actual practice, without actual practice that you can use in your life, it is very difficult to transform suffering into past. This is important. If you've studied lots of lots of dharma, especially if you've studied uh, the uh, Mahati teachings, and uh, only take up on the words, talking about luminosity and so on. For example, I met a uh, renounce it before, and all he talked about is uh, is luminosity. He would say everything is luminous, uh, is luminosity. Everything is its uh, natural, spontaneous manifestation. And uh, once he met some, he had some big problems that occurred in his life, and he started crying every day. So I called him and said that, didn't you say it's all natural uh, luminosity? It's all, uh, it's the non-dual uh, luminosity and em emptiness. Where is that understanding now? But he can't. He can't understand anymore. He, he couldn't uptake that anymore. He was crying in. He was crying in the phone. I can't talk too much about it because I, I I don't want you to figure out who it was who he was. Uh, otherwise, he would be quite embarrassed. So anyhow, uh, whenever for those people who talk about uh, the non dual non duality of uh, emptiness and luminosity, the natural wisdom and so on, if you talk about that. When you are happy, uh, but when you are unhappy, you no longer talk about that anymore. This, I think, I think you are grasping onto the theory. When you are happy, talking about emptiness and mahaati and so on is very easy. But whenever you encounter suffering to yourself, you will be able to see if it is a genuine practitioner or not. If that person has a genuine realization or not, you see it very clearly. And it all has something to do with whether you have a, a practice on a day uh, on a. Uh, a daily basis. Therefore, you suffering as basis for the following practice. You suffering to train the to train in renunciation. Um, so suffering is very momentary, and we should transform it into the path. Uh, over here, it listed a few in the text. It listed a few different methods to train. Yourself, and uh, the first one is to use suffering to train in renunciation. And first, you need to uh, sometimes you need to think in such a way. Sometimes, then use your suffering in order to train your mind in renunciation. Say to yourself, as long as I wander powerless and without any freedom in samsara, as long as you're in samsara, there is no freedom. There is all kinds of suffering. And it's not something unjust or unwanted, uh, unwarranted. It's simply the very nature of samsara. You can't think in such a way that why me? I'm a good person. Why it happens to me? There's no, there's really no need to um, complain about it. Uh, at times, develop a deep sense of revulsion by thinking, if it's already so hard for me to bear even a little suffering and pain of happy realms, and then what about the suffering of the lower realms? This is quite important. Uh, there are people who would practice on renunciation once they feel suffering. As long as you're suffering, you will encounter all different kinds of pain. 
This is very natural in samsara. It happens uh, rather, uh, it, it happens uh, the different kind of pain and suffering, such as headache, headache a surgery, uh, being slandered, uh, criticized, and um, humiliated even, uh, or uh, it may be uh, health issues, and it may be conflicts between people. All of those uh, sufferings are the sufferings that's scattered in our life. But those are scattered suffering, unlike the suffering that is continuously ongoing uh, in the hell realm. For example, you're unhappy today because you didn't eat well, you're not, you're just not in good mood, and you're having headache and so on. But all of those kind of sufferings compared to the suffering that happens in the hell realm, let it be the realm of extreme coldness or hotness uh, or hot. But um, there is really no time to take a break. We have Sundays. We have Sundays to take a break. But in Hell Realm, they have no Sundays. They have no holidays. They suffer from. Uh, they would. They're suffering at all times. So. What if you reborn in those realms? What if you reborn in hungry realm, a hungry ghost realm? What if you reborn in animal realm compared to the suffering that that is rather little and scattered in our life, uh, the suffering that comes from other uh, lower realms is, is uh, more excruciating. Therefore, whenever suffering happens, especially this time during the pandemic, it's been so long already, it must be very uh, painful for a lot of, lots of people. And maybe because of that, you, you may generate some genuine renunciation. I I often think about it in such a way as well. Uh, maybe because it's very different. It's a different kind of uh, illness. There are many people probably don't even have an, an opportunity to look at their relatives or loved ones before their death. All different kinds of loneliness and fear. Therefore. They would suffer uh, greatly, but even that the kind of suffering uh, compared to the suffering in hell realm is still uh, quite. There's a, a still quite great of um, uh, contrast. Therefore, even the the worst kind of suffering in uh, our in the human realm compared to the three lower realms, our suffering is uh, still very scattered, and very little, very um, tiny. Uh, therefore, in such a way, you can think that my suffering compared to the hungry ghosts are really nothing. And in such a way. Uh, the suffering won't be so excruciating anymore for you. And then continue to think samsara is indeed an ocean of suffering, uh, fathomless and without any end. Then turn your mind towards liberation and enlightenment. With this kind of suffering, your mind will then uh, turn towards liberation, just as in the biography of Milarepa, it says that when he returned to the village, his sister has already left and his mother died, his home already destroyed, and all of the farmland uh, are no longer like how he remembered. Uh, Upon seeing such a scene, he felt really saddened. And this kind of sadness is unlike our worldly beings. He had a wonderful family. He had a, a, 
he went out to practice, and after he came back, there is nothing left. I don't know how we can face it. We're probably going to be staying there and crying at all times. But Milarepa at the time made a decision and started thinking that this is samsara. This is the suffering that such beings go through. Therefore, I have to go to a, 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 a quiet place to practice. The Dharma. Therefore, he left his hometown and eventually attained enlightenment. In in the treachery of fifth instructions, the Bailon Chenpa it says that uh, when encountering destructions or obstacles, you can encounter the the genuine Dharma, and because of so. Uh, because of uh, uh, because of the obstacles, you can gain liberation. Therefore, the obstacles give you is of great ki kindness to you. And because of pain and uh, and uh, uh, sadness, one meets the genuine Dharma. Therefore. Such kind of pain and uh, suffering is of great can kindness to you because you've already uh, attained happiness through the genuine Dharma. So for all of our audience over here, um, some people may be uh, criticized by others and maybe you've generated lots of renunciation in the samsara or renunciation towards the relationships between people. Uh, and because of such kind of renunciation, you studied dharma, you finally attained uh, liberation and freedom. And then all of the people who made who created harm to you. In fact, they are of great kindness, uh, or you owe you actually owe them uh, quite greatly. There are people who turned their mind to the Dharma or studied learning Dharma because they got ill. Without being ill, they would probably never study the Dharma. Therefore, getting ill could actually be uh, could actually be, uh, be of the great kindness uh, to you. It's really wonderful to go through this kind of suffering and pain because you turn your mind to the Dharma, and then this kind of suffering becomes the most valuable uh, to your life. Also, suffering, in fact, is really normal. We have to recognize that. Many people would say that I have to be happy forever, but this is not possible because a suf a samsara is full of suffering. It's very normal. In the Mahanirvana Sutra, it says that in the samsara, in the three realms of samsara, there is no place that is uh, full of happiness only. There is only suffering, uh, especially the sufferings from birth, old age, sickness, and death. In Yogacara Shastra, it talks about 110 kinds of suffering. We, of course, talk about uh, suffering of suffering, suffering of change, and uh, so on. And on top of that, there are seven types of uh, suffering, uh, such as birth, old age, sickness, and death, uh, meeting the ones that you don't want to meet, and uh, departing with the uh, ones you love, uh, the suffering of not able to get what you want, and so on. On top of that, uh, there is the suffering from coldness, uh, suffering from uh, the uh, excruciating heat, uh, suffering from 
嗯、um, ，hunger suffering from thirst and suffering from。Suffering from、um, decreasing, suffering from decrease of wealth, suffering from harm coming from others, suffering from sickness, suffering from loss of freedom, and suffering from the loss of shila or precepts. And suffering from loss of view, and so on. All of these kind of suffering is permeating in the three realms. In the three realms of samsara, if our mind is not strong enough, or if we don't understand that I can accept this kind of suffering, if we don't have this realization, realization, it will be extremely difficult for us to live in such an ocean that is full of suffering. We should understand it. When we meet people who seems lucky, such as、uh, people with money, people with、uh, beauty, people with、uh, with fame,、uh, all of those kind of people that uh, are uh, that seems to be very lucky.、Uh, But how about their mind? Are there genuine peace and happiness in their mind? Are their mind completely devoid of suffering? In fact, I think their suffering is probably more, much more stronger than we can imagine. In some ways, we usually think, "Wow, he drives such a luxurious car, enjoys such delicious food. He's living in this celestial being's world, and he must not suffer from any kind of pain." But after getting to know those kind of people, you would realize they live just as the nor the that kind of life as everyone else, and maybe sometimes they have even worse suffering. So suffering doesn't come from external phenomena, but it really depends on your own mind. While you're facing this, it is really important to recognize the nature, the source, and the function of the suffering. In such a way, even if you cannot avoid suffering, at least you will be able to face suffering with ease. This is extremely important、uh, when we talk about. Suffering. When we talk about recognizing suffering,、uh, in fact, we know that samsara is suffering. We know that suffering is permeating theme in our life, and、uh, after recognizing it and facing this fact, then you are prepared. Just as. Prison is full of suffering. Once you know it, even if you go to prison, you will be able to accept that suffering. If you used to think that prison is like、uh, heaven, is a wonderful place to be, then once you enter into prison, then you would think that why there are so many problems here, and then it will be difficult for you to stay there. And、uh, according to a sutra, it says that since we've already attained、uh, this body, we will have suffering. We've already have this body in the three realms. We will definitely have suffering. We will definitely have pain.、Uh, that is to say. The only way to transcend such a kind of suffering from the three realms is to attain the、uh, fruition of arhathood or fruition of、uh, pratika Buddha's、uh, fruition. In such a way, we will be able to completely eradicate the suffering and the cause of suffering. Otherwise, even if you become a, 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 a Even if you become a, a universal monarch or become a Brahmin and, and all of those wonderful、uh, titles, whatever great power you have, you still cannot depart from the three kinds of sufferings. Therefore, after recognizing what samsara is or the truth of samsara. 
uh, if we can generate the genuine renunciation from samsara, from samsara, we will uh, be able to eventually attain liberation. This is the first practice, so you have to try that, try to practice in such a way. Look at the suffering samsara. When you recognize that the suffering in samsara is just very normal, it's, it's there and it's normal. I should suffer since I'm already in samsara. And in such a way, you won't suffer as much. There are people around us, maybe their practice are not really good, but I, I see people around me, though my own practice is not that great, but I can definitely feel that people have different goals. It doesn't matter how wonderful their goals are, that's, that's it. Um, today there was a, there was a, a, a there was someone telling me, saying that, well, I've been studying philosophy, but I think uh, birth, old age, sickness is the most fair, the most justice of all. I said, okay, there are some teachings in philosophy, but I think in Buddhism, there's much deeper teachings. He said, okay, maybe I'll read some sutras. I said, okay, okay, that's better. So that's the first one to generate uh, renunciation. Second is to use suffering to use suffering to train in taking refuge. Um, say to yourself, life after life, again and again, we're continuously plagued by these kinds of fears, and the one and only protection that can never fail us is the precious guide and the Buddha, the precious path and the Dharma and the precious companion, on the way the Sangha, the three jewels. So it is to them that I must rely entirely. Whatever happens, I will never renounce them. Let this become a firm conviction and train in practice taking refuge. Uh, if we have never learned uh, the uh, sutra of uh, remembering the three jewels at all times or uh, studied the merits of the three jewels, you probably would just think that this is a way of saying it or it's just on words. Uh, it's very vague. But after really studied or know the merit of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, you will definitely uh, generate faith and confidence to the three jewels. Uh, Ponsukar Rinpoche gave a teaching on taking refuge in the three jewels. I really felt uh, it was such a wonderful teaching. And that teaching were translated by uh, people across the world into, I think, over a dozen of languages. And people translated it voluntarily because they felt it was uh, very beneficial. And uh, it's quite wonderful that people from different countries felt that that teaching has a profound meaning and maybe everyone has different feelings after reading it. Uh, when truly contemplating on the three jewels, you will feel that whomsoever in the samsara, whenever the encounter uh, unfortunate events as long as they rely on the three jewels they will experience the unfathomable strength that comes from the three jewels just as uh, it is stated in the sutra as long as you can generate a great faith then whatever uh, suffering that uh, has accumulated for thousands and millions of eons will uh, will be eradicated. So all the suffering coming through this world uh, that happens in this human world can also be eradicated by relying upon the strength of the three jewels. In the uh, sutra of uh, the uh, woman who attained unsullied uh, said that 
There is no other where to go、uh, than the three jewels. That is Buddha Dharma and Sangha.、Uh, so you should only seek protection from the three, because. The sentient beings who can save you, who can protect you, are still suffering from the samsara, still suffering from the the different kinds of uh, uh, conditions、um, and their own karma. But the Buddha Dharma and Sangha. The Buddha, who is of great compassion, the genuine Dharma, definitely have such power to lead us out,、uh, to guide us out of the ocean of suffering. In the sutra requested by Mandrashri, stated that if you rely upon the Buddha Dharma and Sangha, as well as the Four Noble Truths. Um, you will be able to、uh, arrive at a safe place that is devoid of、uh, all suffering and attain liberation. In such a way, you will be able to resolve all your problems. So, by taking refuge in the three jewels, many different sufferings will be will be resolved. Don't even talk about the suffering in not even mentioning the suffering in samsara, the suffering inside our. Our human realm,、uh, such as、uh, moodiness, irritation,、uh, sadness, depression. After taking refuge in the three jewels, anything happens in this world、uh, doesn't make you feel lousy anymore. You will have a rather very happy. Mentality to face anything happens in our life. From many people's experience, this is、uh, the this is a story of many people's true experience. Whenever we encounter any kind of obstacles, if we can. Practice、uh, taking refuge in such a way the suffering will dissipate. You can chant the four ref the you can chant the four refuge. I do that. Whatever suffering I encounter. Whatever obstacles, adversities I encounter, I would sit and I would、um, then devotedly chant this, and、uh, in such a way, usually some miracles or some、uh, magic would happen, and、uh, the result would be、uh, different. So whatever difficulties and problems you encounter, do not give up on the three jewels, especially after taking refuge in the three jewels. Many people, after taking refuge in the three jewels, whatever things they face. People would feel that they have a place to rely on, even if their families and friends give up on them. They still feel they have a place to take refuge.、Uh, they have a place to rely. I did not get ordained because of suffering. Many、uh, journalists ask me, "Why did you get refuge? You were 23 only. It must be some problems that happened in your life." I said, "No, there was no problem. I only、uh, had genuine faith in the three jewels, because at the time, not many people understood me.、Uh, it was a very different time."
uh, but uh, at that time, my teacher and the colleagues and uh, uh, my classmates, my uh, families felt that it was uh, not the right choice. But only after I contemplated and studied the Dharma, uh, the people at the time who cut me out of their life started to uh, talk to me again and uh, started to have a better uh, attitude towards me. So if your view is right, your actions are right, then whomsoever around you, let it be people or non-human beings that will revere you. Therefore, take refuge is really important. That is the right choice to make. I am initially I wanted to give teaching on the next one. Today I didn't really prepare the lesson. Uh, I went out. Uh, so maybe we'll stop here today. It's a little bit better than. It's better than how I imagined because at the beginning of class I thought to myself, "Oh, I, I have nothing to talk to teach today." But uh, it's, it turned out to be better than I thought. Today I think many of you, uh, after reading the news, you probably understand that you should wear your masks. Don't go. Uh, don't get out. Uh, try your best to stay home and practice and listen to the Dharma. Uh, there are cities that is uh, probably more severe, uh, not very optimistic, but we don't have to panic, we don't have to worry. Uh, anyhow, this is really the collective karma that came to fruition. It's very difficult to control, but we should at least try to protect ourselves. Because pandemic in the relative world is very scary, it can be very scary, uh, especially according to the official data. There are over 100,000 people who died because of it. We don't really know what's going to happen later. Some, some specialists say uh, this pandemic, this disease will, uh, this virus would stay with uh, human beings. Will coexist with us and um, maybe eventually people will die with the masks on their face. Uh, on one hand, samsara is uh, full of suffering, but on the other hand, this is just really the nature of samsara. It's only that we've been really naive before the pandemic. But I think it's through uh, the pandemic this time, many people had developed deeper contemplation, even for the practitioners who don't practice diligently, they had some very genuine uh, insights uh, about birth, old age, sickness and death. So that is why we need to uh, dedicate our merit with uh, the king, uh, the uh, king Samadabhadra's uh, aspiration, because so many people need the blessings. Uh, on the other hand, it is because the session, the beings had already created so many negative karma. Uh, eventually. The nature um, will uh, combat, or eventually the the karma will ripe into its uh, will come to its fruition. So no matter what, we should try to dedicate all of our uh, virtuous root with. Uh, with kindness to everyone. So let's chant the uh, King Samarabhadra's the aspiration and uh, the uh, Vajra Armor mantra as well as the other uh, Pamasambhava's mantra. This is quite important. So I really hope that you can chant it with great diligence. Uh, later on, if you're chanting it or not, it depends. So we have to protect ourselves so with mantras as well as <coughs> with relative protections. This is quite important. And we'll stop here today. <laughs> Thank 
Kirgan and Jir alone to buy. Tribum Zulin drove out.